Hey everybody, I am just at home alone. Uh, wife Tara is at the Padres game, facing the Brew Crew. And I just got off the phone with a really good friend of mine, Nick Hansen, from back home. And um, we just had such a good conversation. Um, it was like over two hours of talking. So both of us like to talk, and we'll, uh, when we drive, we like to call each other up now and then. And I actually lived in his... Um, so he had like a little farmhouse in a little in a suburb of the Twin Cities, which is Minneapolis, St. Paul, for you non-Minnesota people, in a place called Mendota Heights. And I lived in his place over uh, a summer, and it was the same summer that I met my wife. Um, and I forget, you know, I forget about that. And so we have been able to have conversations over time because we both like catching up and um we <laughs> we very fondly refer to him as dad um but that's really what he was at that time like i was 24 25 no i was i was 23 i was 23 when i met my wife and um there were a lot of things that I didn't know yet. And that's, of course not, right? No, people don't know a lot of things at 23. But I was lucky enough to, to know that I was, I might have been with my, I might have been with the girl, I might have just met the girl that I was going to marry. Because it actually happened really early on. So anyway, I don't mean to ramble about that. But some of the themes that we talked about were leadership, um, he just uh, took on a big, um, I think he bought a company. Um, I don't know how big it was, but um, he's, he's running the show and he's a physicist. And so he's done, um, he's done things that I'm not quite sure how to describe. He's a pretty smart dude. But um, bottom line is we talked about um, – he said he wants to be a generalist um, in a world of specialists. And I thought that was really interesting because at first when he talked about being a generalist, well, I'm like, well, no, because everybody in my world is telling me that I need to be a specialist and that I, I, shouldn't, um, I shouldn't try to do hitting or fielding. I, sh I should be the best throwing guy ever. Um, but I kind of don't listen, which is why I went up to Doug Latta's place this last weekend. Um, but anyway, he was talking about how he listens to people that don't agree with him. And I think that's really what, <laughs> Bobby, I'll tell you when you come in tomorrow. Ask me about Mike Fires when you come in tomorrow. Okay, I want to keep it. Uh, I, I just want to keep this a little bit more centered on where I was going with this. Fair, because I'm glad that you're watching baseball, and I'm glad that you're paying attention to his pitching motion because there is a lot to learn from him. So we'll talk more about it then. Okay. Um. So, where was I? Listening to people that don't agree with you. Um, and that's really hard for a lot of people. And it's super hard for me. And so with podcasts, it's a, it's a way for you to do that. Um, because you can listen to people that, you know, think things that are completely different than you. And you don't have an opportunity to talk back. And so there isn't, um, you know, it's a way that you can hear things where you don't get to jump in and be a jerk. You don't get to jump in and disagree. You just have to hear them out. So maybe not everybody can appreciate that the way that somebody like me can because I like to talk so much. But it's a really good way. It's it's something that has been very challenging for me and has really helped me. Um, and now I'm I'm trying to you know practice that out in the world. Um, you know, so. You might be at a different place in in where you're at. Maybe you're a, still a student. Maybe you're a parent. Um, you know, there's a lot of different places in life that you can be, and and still, I think it's important to, I think it's important that everybody listens to some people with 
different opinions than them and like treat them very nice. And it's really important that you do because you might change your mind someday and they might change theirs and it doesn't matter. You might both, you know, have differing viewpoints, um, but people evolve and things can happen in life that really change your perspective on it. So, you know, you really have no idea what you're going to feel like about everything in, um, in 20 years. And, and so typically, you know, and I'm saying this, just repeating what I've heard from people that are older than me, because I recognize that I don't have the experience of somebody that's 60. And I recognize that I don't have all of these things. But what I do have is I have ears and I listen to people that are much older than me and everybody that's wise. They always talk about just caring for people and doing things that are important to you um, and really investing in yourself. That's what they say. Investing in yourself and investing in people. And maybe that's just what I've heard. So maybe that's my bias, but that's, I saw Ace just jumped on. So Ace, I'm just talking about investing in people and that, and that starts with investing in yourself and that everybody is getting there at different places. But this, this, I was, I was talking with a friend tonight, Ace, and he's, oh gosh, Hans, I just turned 30. So I want to say Hans is in his late thirties and he has two kids. Um, and we were just talking life and, the last thing that we talked about, and I want to share that story with you because it is such a wonderful story, is he said, Cass, when I'm all done with all of this and my kids are graduated high school, I'm going to be an old dad at that point. So he'll be in his late 50s and he's like going into retirement. My goal is to retire <laughs> and I just want to go mow the lawn at the, at the baseball field and I want to mow it perfectly. <laughs> and I get emotional because I like, I know exactly what he means because that's the point. And then I go, yeah, and you're also going to rebuild the mound and rebuild the dugouts and make the grandstand perfect. And he goes, and make their little league field the best. And it's, it's awesome hearing that, right? Because I can picture myself doing something like that. And that's what happens when you listen to people and invest in them and invest in, in, in yourself. Because the only way that you're going to be able to do that, right, is to listen to yourself and invest in yourself and start investing in the people around you. Oh my gosh. Because so you can put yourself in a position where you can have a positive impact on them. And that, that is what gives you meaning. And it's so cool because once you realize it, once you realize that, it's so easy to do this. It's really, really easy to care about people and invest in them and try to be a better version of yourself. So I get emotional because it's real. It's not a fake thing. I'm not manipulative, I'm honest, and I want people to know what I'm going through because my, they might relate and they might think I'm a weirdo, and that's cool too, but I don't always have good days, and neither do you, and neither do the kids that I'm working with, and if I can recognize that I can have less crappy days, or at least know how to Find the good things in those days because they're always there. They're always there. And that gives you a ton, a ton of, that, that, that's what makes you want to wake up in the morning. That's what makes you want to do things better. That's what makes you, that's what makes you get what you want. And that's what, that's the, that's what sounds weird, but everybody needs that. You need to get the things that you want and it's not the material things. Everybody knows that it's, 
It's the other things. It's the big things. And sometimes you need freedom through some material things. It sure is helpful to have a house. It sure is helpful to have a car that you can drive around in and get places so you can meet more people, so you can invest in those people too. So I think I'm making my point here. So if you've stayed this long, I really appreciate you. Um, If you watch this whole thing, I really appreciate you. And if somehow you got to the end of this and didn't listen to anything else, I also appreciate you. So uh, I hope you have a good rest of your day, night, whatever you're having. And um, yeah, hopefully you keep on watching some Cutter Nation stuff because we love doing what we're doing.